Okay, hi, thank you so much for tuning in to the Path Nutritional Therapy. And I am your host, as always, Brandy Lloyd. And I have a super awesome, amazing, uh, crazy shit path guy on uh, today. And his name is Dr. Perry Nicholson. I have been a longtime uh, follower and believer in his passion. Um, I use uh, his programs um, on my own body and his tips and tricks uh, for rehab, recovery, repair uh, for my own body and also for my client. And I know that with my own clients, whenever I bring up their lymph system, I get this, this blank stare coming back from them and they don't know what I'm talking about. And, and one of my clients even said, well, I don't have a lymph. And, and I said, no, lymph, lymph, you know, so, so I, asked ah. Dr. <laughs> I asked Dr. Perry if he would come on today and just treat us all like we're five and that we really don't know anything about lymph and for him to kind of share a little bit of the lymph mojo, which is, I love that. I say that all the time. And so, uh, Dr. Perry, welcome. Well, thank you, Brandy, so much for having me on the show. It's really great to be here. And thank you so much for the the kind words. I'm truly grateful for that. Uh, yeah, well, I, I'll tell you what, I tell, I tell normal people, quote unquote, normal people uh, that are not in the healthcare industry, not to feel bad if you don't know what the lymphatic system is, because I'm going to be honest, with you, the people in the medical industry don't even know what the right, right. <laughs> lymphatics, I mean, they know about it, but they really don't pay attention to it, honestly. Um, I'm happy to see that it's beginning to change, at least based on some of the stuff I'm seeing with research coming out, particularly about the, uh, the new lymphatics they found in the brain, which they used to think we didn't have any lymphatics in what they call our central nervous system with our brain and their spinal cord. But now they're like, well, we do. So that, that's <laughs> kind of cool. I'll talk about that a little bit as we go. And I'm trying to, to be a big of a part of that as I can to expose people to the lymphatic system. And honestly, prior to maybe, what is it going on, like maybe four years ago, I didn't really pay much attention to it either. Uh, it wasn't even on my radar. And it came across my radar, like so many things do for people in relationship to their own health. When something happens to you or a loved one, where you, you get chronic pain or you get diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, you know, suddenly out of nowhere and you're searching for answers and you don't get a lot, honestly. <laughs> and you get, and you lose hope and you get frustrated. I'm sure many people listening might be at that point right now. And I certainly was because um, like many people, stuff started coming on to me kind of slowly where I would just start really bad and then all of a sudden uh, I try to take things the medical route to make me feel a little bit better and you know they do that's what they're for right. but it would just keep coming back because it never went after the underlying cause of what's going on it's just treating symptoms and you'll soon find that most of these autoimmune disease things that you have they're just symptoms with different names attached to them uh, and unfortunately I, I became much worse through that uh, approach of the traditional Western medicine of surgery and medications. And uh, I got so bad, honestly, that I had to stop practicing, I had to stop seeing patients and clients on my own because I really was just uh, so tired, so fatigued. My brain started to go where I couldn't like put sentences together. I couldn't remember like what I wanted to say next. <laughs> Right. And that, that's right. not very conducive to helping another person when I can't even help myself. And then so I had to stop teaching as well because I was traveling the world teaching workshops to, for people how to take care of themselves, but I was failing on my own. <laughs> and um, um, I ended up finding the answers through desperation, really. I was looking outside the, outside the box, you might say, a right. lot of things that people think are fringy but you you go down that path when you've suffered enough honestly and uh, nobody else can give you answers of stuff that's supposed to work <laughs> and I, I right? believe that you I think I even had it written on my board back there is kind of what I put messages up for clients or if I'm explaining something I know you're famous with your slides and I've seen those in your boards and everything you said something um, a while back about um, how desperation is the best tool for opening your mind. Yeah. And 
I found that in my own life that I was just like, I'm willing to just do anything just to feel better. Is that kind of where you were? Yeah, I was, you know, I mean, I, I thought that I was looking at the body holistically um, from me being a chiropractor and, and studying that approach. But I was still focused a lot on the musculoskeletal system at that standpoint, which right. are, you know, muscles and joints and fascia and, you know, stop chasing pain came from that world of, it's very simple. Like if your low back hurts and you treat your low back and it doesn't get better, well, then maybe it's not your lower back. Then, right. you know, it, it, it could be from your hip that doesn't move or the middle of your back that doesn't move or something in the front of your body that doesn't hurt. But I was still in the musculoskeletal world, if, if you follow my lead. So it was still yeah. in, in, that, in that system. And I never really looked deeper than that until I got the autoimmune disease, which they still don't know what it was and they don't either. So that's what they classify it as an autoimmune disease. And I'm kind of glad it didn't have a name because sometimes when you get a diagnosis name, then you become that name. And all of a sudden you, you get worse because you have, you're no longer a human being, you're a label. Right. Uh, and, and that has its own uh, deep rabbit holes that you can go into. Right. And, uh, so I was forced to look outside of just a traditional rehab approach that I was dealing with fat, you know, working your muscles or uh, doing corrective exercises and, you know, even basic kind of fundamental nutrition really wasn't working for me anymore because mm -hmm. I was in such a state of full body inflammation, what they call systemic inflammation, where almost yeah. every single thing in your body is inflamed or freaking hurts. Yeah. Um, I'm so many people listening have that and they get a diagnosis of like chronic fatigue syndrome or, you know, <laughs> something like fibromyalgia or something like that. Right. You know, it's all the same underlying reason, which is just chronic inflammation. And then you have to figure out you know, why is the body not able to get rid of the inflammation? All right? right. So you have to look for underlying causes and that there's a couple of different reasons, but we'll get into that later. But you, you know, why it can't get rid of swelling. And then that's what was happening to me. So I was trying to look for answers on my own. And um, I came across a course that I was going to in London because I was starting to study like energy systems in the body. I'm looking at different systems than I'd gone to before. And uh, I was at this course and this guy said, said something to me. He said, you know, I know, I think I have an idea about why you're not healing and not getting where you want to go because this guy followed me on my social media and actually wanted me to come to the course and he was quite surprised at how unhealthy i looked when i got there oh, uh, yeah and, right and and i would uh he said to me I, I think you have a lymphatic system problem <laughs> and i'm like and i'm like say what like i didn't even cross <laughs> my radar right and then he he said i just want to check a couple of areas on your body to see how the the lymph, they're called lymph nodes, which are larger areas that, uh, where the lymphatic system comes together. And these nodes are designed to detoxify your body. Like the, the lymphatic system is basically the sewage system of your body. It gets rid of and fights um, bacteria, viruses, parasites, fungus, things like that, outside toxins, but also that's called exotoxins from the world outside, right. most of it, most of it man-made stuff. And then you have endotoxins, things that are already inside of you and just yourself, because what happens is that you have about 30 billion cells that die naturally every day in your body. That's what, so you regenerate. That's what aging is, right? So things die and then you regenerate. And all those cells, when they die, that's what we call cellular waste or metabolic waste that happens from everyday life, right? All of that waste has to go, some, it's got to get out of you. It's right. It's got to go somewhere. Um, and the primary system that gets rid of that waste is the lymphatic system, right? So it's pretty damn important that if you have all these toxins in your body from the outside world and the inside world, they don't have anywhere to go. They just stay inside of you. And trust me, you're not going to feel too good when that happens. Sure. And I always equate it to like, because if you know it's the sewage system of your body, I kind of use this analogy of like, imagine when you go to the bathroom in your house, that's waste, right? Right. The, and if you couldn't flush the toilet for years, 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just going to sit there. It's just going to be nasty. Well, that's right. what happens inside of your body because the lymphatic system flushes the toilet inside of your body. And, you know, not good things hang around when, when that waste stays inside of you. And he, he actually put his hands on two places uh, on my neck. It's just right behind my jaw, below my ear at the top of your neck. That's the largest lymph node in your neck. And it was excruciating. I mean, I was completely surprised because I'd never even bothered to check there. And it was very puffy and swollen. And then he checked all the other primary areas of the body, usually around the arms and then the hip and groin and knee. And I, they were excruciating, like really puffy. Wow. And I'm like, I, I was stunned. Um, but, and he said, yeah, you're, you're just like a walking inflammation with the system is overloaded. And of course, you know me personally, you know, when somebody tells me I learned something, I mean, like I'm like a dog with a bone. I'm not going to let yep. it go. And, but he gave me a, a little bit of a treatment and I woke up the next day and I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'm nuts, but I feel better. Like, you know, this is, I think I'm on to something. And I just, I started to invest my time in learning more and more about it, but then began to treat it. And I'll, I'll tell you how I put my own system together over the years from stuff that I've learned. But I, within a month, I was like a different human. I, I was like, my brain was coming back. Um, so my energy was coming back my pain that I was having all these different places over my body. And I was, what I loved is I was not as puffy anymore as swollen anymore. So I'd look back at old pictures and it looks like, I'm like, all right, who put the pumpkin on my shoulders? Like my <laughs> face was just like, like, right, right. You know, yeah. Like really big. And uh, I just looked heavy and I lost 30 pounds of inflammation and swelling and fat in a month. That's amazing. Yeah. And I've been into bodybuilding and fitness since I was 14 years old. I mean, I know how to burn body fat if you've got a normally functioning system. Sure. Through nutrition and uh, calorie ca calories and exercise and moving. You know, it's plain and simple. You try to restrict your calories, you move more. And, but I was like, that is not, I'm just that, you know, how many people listening to this are like, I do all that and nothing changes, right? Right. And you just get frustrated and then you just end up doing some crazy diet that puts you under more stress sure. or you just give up altogether. Uh, or when you do train, you feel like you have more pain. That's very yeah. common too. And I was like, this is amazing. Like it, that just dropped off. Like I'm like, I'm, I rub the magic lamp of the genie. <laughs> And, you know, it took my 30 pounds away. But then I, I had to figure out why did that happen? Right? right. Like, why did helping the lymphatic system make such an improvement in everything? I mean, it's great that if you look great, but trust me, if you can feel great on the inside at the same time, I mean, well, that, that, was, that was worth everything. Yeah, that was my problem. Probably the best I ever looked, you know, being a personal trainer for all these years and athlete and everything, the best I ever looked, I look back at some of those pictures was the worst I ever felt. I mean, oh, yeah. I felt like, I mean, like hurting everywhere and just exhausted and uh, slurring my words by the afternoon because the fatigue and if, you know, fibromyalgia, I was like, great. So now we're just throwing darts, you know, kind of a thing. And, and so I, I know what you mean about chasing anything and everything and, and getting the, um, confused looks from the doctors and then they just say, well, maybe, you know, it's just anxiety or maybe, you know, whatever. And I'm like, oh, come on. It's, it's, it's making me anxious chasing this. And I don't know, and I don't know what it is. And I, I right. you made a comment about like getting a diagnosis and, and I, when I got my diagnosis for the uh, spondylitis, I was like, first I was really for about an hour because it was a long drive to this doctor and about an hour in the car. I'm like, that's BS. That's not what's going on, you know? And then I'm on my phone and I'm looking at things and I'm like, 
dang, this is like spot on. How could I miss this? I'm a body professional. I'm a body worker. And I've been doing so much work even with you, you know, and everything. And, and I'm like, I'm doing all this. My joints should be great. My lifting should be great. My eating is great. I'm not dialing it in. And um, I know that frustration of, of um, using the knowledge that you know and being shocked when somebody tells you something else, you know, like the lymph work. Mm -hmm. Well, how did I miss this? You know, how, how did I miss this? And, and then of course came the rabbit holes and kind of a little bit of a depression. Like, so this is my future, you right. know what I mean? Is my spine going to fuse up and, and whatever. And so, um, I love, I love all the work with the lymph because it kind of, uh, pulled me back out emotionally. <laughs> I didn't go too far down because I'm like, wait a minute. What I know from following Dr. Perry is he basically just told me I have an inflammatory arthritis issue and that I have some measure of control, not just with my diet, but with, you know, your lymph programs and, and stuff like that. And it was actually, it definitely shortened my freak out leash, you know, kind of mm -hmm. feeling like there was something that I could do about it. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes complete sense. I mean, when you have a sense of empowerment that you can do something to right. control your health and how you feel, and we all do, right? I mean, right, honestly, right. No, nobody ca should care more about your health than you do. And you know your body better than anybody else does. And it's natural to have that kind of response when you get a diagnosis. And of course, you, you, the, the human mind, when you hear something like that, it always goes towards worst case scenario. I mean, that, that's honestly what it's designed to do. Uh, because it's it's trying to look at all the options and it looks at worst case scenarios in just in case it has to go there. So that's just a survival protective response. So I try to encourage people not to feel too bad when you go that route. It's sure. actually just, it's uh, human nature to do that. It's just don't get stuck there in quicksand. And unfortunately, when you go on to Dr. Google, totally, and you, and then you read this stuff and it's every every kind of possible symptom or worst case scenario that you can come up with. And all of a sudden you're like, you start to get symptoms that go with the disease that you didn't have before because you're supposed to have them. And right. you know, all those things can take over. So education is really powerful in relationship to healing, but it can also be a, a, a big negative too. Uh, totally. With, totally. With, if you keep that under, under control, but um, the key word there is the, the inflammation, right? You said itis. Itis is, I don't care what kind of itis you got. It's an inflammation response, right? It's like, and so the names honestly don't really matter, at least, at least in the world of uh, like chronic pain and autoimmune disease, right? Because you can have itises from uh, significant and severe infections where you need <clears throat> like uh, antibiotics or surgery or something like that. There's different levels of in, uh, infection and itis. But, you know, chronic inflammatory, what they call lifestyle diseases, autoimmune diseases, are long-term systemic inflammation that you've had in your body for probably 20, 30 years right. b before they manifest themselves. They just didn't have a name that goes with the yet. You just got the typical... Uh, well, it just happens because you're getting older BS or right, you're, right. you're always tired or fatigued or something because that, that's just our new normal. Everybody's there. So it's just the way it's supposed to be. And I'm like, you know, not so much. Like you're supposed to be really, uh, you know, full of joy, energy, have a little bit of pain, then it goes away and stuff like that. And, but, but we set a new normal because what's the option, right? I mean, you have to. Right. You have to deal with it some way. So you have this, you adapt to the misery, I call it. But there's so many things that somebody can do to help themselves get better from their lifestyles and their behaviors. Even just simply choosing to do it is a huge positive step forward. But also working with this lymphatic system, because honestly, the healthcare community really doesn't look at your lymphatic system in only one case most of the time. Most people hear about lymph as soon after they hear the cancer word. That's sure. about the only time, because you hear it a lot with breast cancer, because you have a lot of lymph around the breast tissue and uh, what they call the pectoral region around the shoulder or axillary region, which is near the armpit region where you put your deodorant and things like that. Right. 
but I want you to think about this for a moment. Like they say, you, you know, uh, with cancer, the lymphatic system comes up because they know that cancer can, what they call travel, and then the word in medicine for travel is metastasize. It can, it can go from one place and then travel to another place. That's called metastatic cancer. And basically, it's a big fancy word that means travel. <laughs> uh, and, and it goes through the lymphatic system. And I thought about that for a second. Well, that should tell you something right there, that it's a system that might be a little important in relationship to going everywhere right. in, in the body. Uh, and what I firmly believe in my work, from what I've seen from uh, having survived cancer about 18 years ago, and working with people in many different disciplines in different countries, because outside of the US, they're much more open to uh, different kind of treatments for cancer than they are here is that uh, the premise is that you developed cancer because you had a dysfunction in your lymphatic system long before you got cancer. Right. And then that, that sets the environment for cancer to take hold. Because the, the reason I say that statement is because the lymphatic system is a fundamental system in your body where, um, and I use the, the term body aquarium. So, uh, like a fish tank. So I want to kind of explain this analogy because most people learn when they can reference something else that they're familiar with. Right. Uh, so if you think about an, an aquarium that has water in it and you've got all your different fish and sea life, and then you've got your coral or your gravel or your castles and you have this beautiful water in there, but it takes a lot to maintain that water. Right. And yeah, the health of the fish or whatever you have in that tank is beholden to how well the water is maintained. Okay. So basically to keep the water maintained, you have a filtration system, right? And the filtration system is usually out of sight, out of mind. You don't even see it. <laughs> it's usually underneath the fish tank, <laughs> all these different pipes and stuff and filters and then it keeps that water looking wow everything is so beautiful and if that water environment is clean life can thrive and that's the same thing for you so you are mostly water in your body like 70 to 80 percent water depending on the resources that you listen to and your cells of your body live in water right and you have inside of you what they call interstitial. Interstitial means between tissue. Interstitial fluid, or another word is extracellular fluid, extra outside the cell fluid. Then the cells have to live in this liquid environment, and that's held together. Your skin is the outside of the fish tank that holds everything in, right? And inside of your body, you got all these different living uh, fish, you call them cells, <laughs> right? Or you, you call them coral. So I say, you know, it could be your, um, it could be your neck in there. It could be your hip. It could be your eyeball. It doesn't matter what they're all in the tank. You follow? And so if you think about the fish tank, what happens if something goes wrong with the filter system on your fish tank <laughs> within days, you'll start to see murky water right? You'll, you'll start to begin to have less oxygen in the water because there's not enough filtration. So oxygen decreases. And then you'll start to see bacteria, fungus, and viruses, and all this stuff begin to develop along the glass. Mm. Or you'll see your fish start to get these crazy markings on them because they start to die. Right. And then you'll see all these little yucky, what they call biofilm. It's like slippery, gooky film that goes over all the stuff in the tank. Mm -hmm. And then you set up a stagnant environment where everything is still. The fluid doesn't move or filter. And then what happens eventually to everything in the tank? It slowly dies. It doesn't die fast. Right. It, it dies slow and it tries to do the best it can in the environment that it's in. That's the exact same thing that happens inside of your body over time. If your lymphatic system 
becomes dysfunctional. And I tell people, why does that happen? Well, because you're alive on the earth in today's age with man-made stuff and it's overloaded. Hmm. Um, and you don't do some of the things that move the limb. So your filter is dysfunctional. So it works, but it doesn't work great. Right, right. And then inside of your body, all that fluid starts to stagnate. And then you actually begin, this is what happens inside of your body. You don't have enough oxygen inside your water and then cells need oxygen. If cells don't get, if cells don't get oxygen, they cannot regenerate. They can't make new ones. And what happens when you can't make new cells? I got news for you. You stay sick. That's what happens to you. Right? Yeah, yeah. And then when that water doesn't have oxygen and it gets murky, you also can't get nutrients into the cells in order for the cells to be able to heal and regenerate because they're living in their own waste. So yeah. uh, even if you did get nutrients into the cell, they get the, the, the waste comes out of the cell once they use it, kind of like when you go to the bathroom. Sure. And then if the waste can't get out of your body, it stays around the cell. And then you get endotoxins. Endotoxins is where you become toxic. And just like in the fist tank, what happens inside of you is you already have inside of you, everybody's got a parasite, a bacteria, a fungus, and a virus. It's part of being alive on this planet. If you say, no, I don't have them, you're wrong. Everybody's got them. <laughs> right. uh, and you need them, actually. They're, they're critical for life, survival, and thriving. If you didn't have those, you would not be alive. So you need them. That's what we call an interconnected ecosystem where everything on this planet has to work together. Okay. But here's what happens. Too much of anything is not good. Sure. You, need, you need balance, right? You need harmony. You need yin and yang. And all those viruses, bacteria, fungus, and parasites, they thrive when you don't have oxygen. So they come out in a deoxygenated environment and then they take over and then they create what they call their own bios. That's they call that biofilm. And they release a biofilm to protect themselves. And then that biofilm, it layers on itself, layers on itself, and they just go and they start to hide inside of the tissues because they're trying to escape your immune system because they don't want to go anywhere because they're taking advantage of you as an opportunistic host. That's what they do. And because if you die, they die. So they're just going to do what they can to hide and not get killed off. But here's what happens with autoimmune disease where your body, quote unquote, starts attacking itself. It never attacks itself. It's being tricked. So it's trying, it's trying to go after those things that are wrapped in biofilm. And it, even when you attack the biofilm, uh, when you begin to do that, that releases toxins into the body. Sure. It's, called, okay, it's called LPS, lipopolysaccharides. That's what really gets you when these things break down. Um, so your, your body, you're actually, here's the thing that I try to tell people to reframe it. Your immune, when you have autoimmune disease, that means your immune system is actually too damn good. Okay. Because it's over protecting you. It's going and going and going and going and it's trying to go like this. It's just, it gets maladapted. What that means is it, it just keeps driving in one direction to try to help you. It just okay. overcompensates like that. And then, so I said do this, okay, let's go back to the analogy. Well, what, what you can do is if you have that tank, if the tank looks terrible and you got dead fish, you could go in there and you could clean the tank. I could change the water. I could go buy new fish. I could clean everything, put it back in the tank, mm -hmm. put brand new water in the tank, and then it looks great again. But if I don't do anything to the filter system, what happens to the tank again in about a week? Right. Same damn thing. Right. <laughs> And that's what medicine does. Medicine goes after the damn stuff in the tank. And that's okay, because you need to do that, right? Right. But, but you have to go after the filter system at the same time, because you have to get rid of toxins if you're ever going to heal yourself. So what you do is this. You do all that stuff, but then you go after the filter system as well, and then it can maintain. Because I've always been trying to look for an underlying reason of why do we do all these wonderful therapies and these, all these interventions? Because they all, work, they all work. That's the dirty little secret. But why do they not stick? Like, why do they keep coming back? There's got to be a reason for it. And to me, 
I think I found the underlying answer with the lymphatic system because I use a phrase all the time that I, I read somewhere. I wish I could remember who said it. Um, it. It said this, you cannot get well in the same environment that you became ill with it. Right, right. You cannot get well in the same environment you became ill with it. Your external environment, but all your, also your internal environment. And here's the thing, your external environment determines your internal environment because they, they work together. Well, it's the same thing with the body. Like if I don't take care of the environment that my cells live in, which is the interstitial fluid, I'm just gonna go right back to the same thing. It's right, it's just like kind of beating your head against the wall. It's like over and over and over and over and over. And so I said, if I can change the environment, I can give my body more of a fighting chance. And so that's why what I do is a key phrase where you have to work the limp before you do anything else. Because in, in the world of, when I look at chronic disease, I firmly believe that there's two causes for chronic disease. One is toxicity. It means you have too much of something inside your body or too much stuff always coming in and both. Mm. And number two is you have a deficiency in your body, which means you don't have enough of something, typically with your minerals or a big one and nutrients. So you have toxicity and you have deficiency. Both sure. go together because the, that's, the, that's the balance part. So if you're ever gonna heal from that chronic disease, no matter what you do, you have to take care of both of those. But here's, how you do it is critical because most people try to put stuff into their body through medication or through supplementation or nutrients they're trying to make up for the deficiency okay but you can't make up for the deficiency until you reduce the toxicity first right because i've got to be able to get rid of the stuff that's standing in the way for all the nutrients to be able to get into the cell so you, you do number one first of trying to get rid of the inflammation that's inside of the body and doing the lymphatic work will do that. Why? Because when I stimulate the lymphatic system, it removes toxins from the body. And then when you start to flush that, then you do nutrients. Then you do step B. Right. And that makes, and that makes sense because the only, um, you know, cause you have to jump through the hoops, even just for insurance reasons and physicals and, you know, you know, maintaining yeah. our doc, maintaining a doctor means we have to see him once a year, whether we need to or not, whether we're going to follow his rules or not, or we're dropped and now we don't have a doctor, you know, kind of a thing. And he was the uh -huh. one to the rheumatologist who the only, the only thing he said was, you know, nothing really matters. Here's your pain medication and your immune suppressors. And then let's, and then here's your, every three month lab slip because what i'm giving you is so horrible on your liver that we need to keep track of your liver and yeah and then, yeah, and then and then you know whenever it gets too bad then we'll get you lined up for your uh cortisone injections you know and because the enthesitis the my big itis you know uh at those attachment points that explained a lot you know and i was like ah now i call it sparking like feeling the attachments when they're kind of pissed off or whatever it feels so yeah. sparky but I'm like really so I walked out of there and and he knew I wasn't going to take anything you know and um, but it's such an emotional place and I was really kind of unprepared for the emotions that it stirred in me even the level of education that I have because when I got sick and I wasn't getting answers and I was just getting prescriptions and you know whatever from everybody nobody was talking to me about uh, inflammation. Nobody was talking to me about uh, my lymphatic system or anything. Mm -hmm. They were talking to me about, you know, giving me new gravel and castles and let's just treat this, you know, my fish tank, kind of what's in my fish tank stuff. And, oh, you have a rash, let's put some cream on it, you know, kind of a thing. Right. And so it, I think it was just frustrating. And then for me to actually uh, firsthand witness sitting in a rheumatology office and having him just hand me my buttload of prescriptions and saying, this is what my life is going to be all about, you right. know, uh, no. yeah. and even knowing, you know, information and saying, you know what, I've been really lax on some of my, you know, lymphatic drainage stuff and, and whatever that I really kind of need to get back on that. And I, I think that that's one of the things I wanted to talk to you about with the lymph work is, um, um, it takes care of a lot of those emotions, uh, you know, how it affects the, 
um, the, the waste removal of the hormones, <laughs> you know, that um, I've noticed since returning to minding my lymph that mm. I haven't felt as emotional, you know, kind of about the whole process and definitely sleeping better, definitely more energy. And, um, and I lost, uh, I, lo I, I, I had like this nagging, I mean, I'm only five feet tall. And, and so when I have like five pounds to lose, <laughs> Oh, it's like, I really feel it, you know? And, yeah. and, and, and so when I started doing my lymph work again on a regular basis, um, I didn't change my eating or anything. And my, my exercise, as a matter of fact, I had to clip it really, I exercise completely differently now. And so way less, uh, lifting and the harder stuff that I knew more yoga and stretching and mobility work. Um, but I lost five pounds just like that, you know, yeah. and my pain level went down significantly. So, so can, can you talk a little bit about the, the hormone, the hormone um, connection or relationship with the lymph system and kind of, am I, am I right? Is it because I was able to kind of, you know, get rid of my spent hormones? But you know, I, what, I don't really know where to go with that. Yeah, well, there's many different layers to it for sure. But yeah, I mean, you actually have hormones that you know, travel through the lymphatic system as well because it's mostly it's mostly water uh protein um and you got some hormones in there uh as well that go through and what, what's what's interesting is that um this is this is where it gets this is this is where it gets fascinating the, the liver is the a liver huge is a huge part i'm getting a little bit of echo there in the background by the way is it might be oh. better. Okay, I'm hearing my own voice going in the background, and I'm like, I'm scaring oh, myself. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, uh, let's go at it in a couple different ways. So the the liver is a huge player in detoxification. So it has to detoxify every drug you've ever taken or anything that comes in. The yeah. And it it is a big player in your lymphatic system as well. It dumps about anywhere from 25 to 50 percent in that ballpark of the overall lymphatics of the body into the lymphatic system in your abdominal region and then it takes it up the spine that goes to your neck and then it goes from your neck back towards your heart so your heart and your, your circulatory system and your and your lymphatic system work together and the hormones circulate through the blood, right? Sure. But so they, they tell you that they're in the blood, but it doesn't tell you how, act, how bioactive they are, right? Okay. Um, but that'll change when your lymphatic system works well. You actually change the amount of hormones that you can carry in your blood because blood viscosity changes. It gets thicker or thinner. Okay. But also every sex hormone that you have has to get synthesized through the liver. So if you have a sluggish liver because of a lymphatic issue, then you can't, you can't synthesize testosterone and estrogen very well. And that's a huge part that your liver plays with estrogen. <laughs> and many people become estrogen dominant uh, over the course of the lifetime, particularly for females. And that's where you can start to gain weight around your hips and thighs. And, but it'll also lead to lower testosterone and then you'll start to get depression, right? And mm. you'll, you'll feel you know, like these um, you know, menopause type symptoms, right? You know, right hot right. flashes and you'll just crash. And so when the liver is sluggish like that and because the lymphatic system, because it's trying to dump things into a lymph system that's sluggish, You'll feel it, but also your thyroid is the thyroid function and your neck is linked to how well the liver works. So I've never found ever a primary thyroid problem. It's always a liver problem that manifests as a thyroid problem. Thyroid is never the problem. It's always usually something with the liver or the, the, the gut, but you have these hormones without going too far down the rabbit hole here. You have in your <laughs> thyroid, what's called T4, hormones to T3 hormones. So T4 has to convert to T3. But 80% of that happens in your liver, nowhere near your thyroid. <laughs> so 
So if your liver doesn't work well, your thyroid, so anybody who was on thyroid medication, you better make sure your liver is checked out. And I don't mean just by blood work because blood work doesn't show you liver function. It only shows you liver damage. That's the two You're different talking, things. About the ALT and AST tests. Yeah, and liver stuff. And, yeah. If stuff shows up on liver enzymes on a blood test, right. you're really screwed. Uh, right. But what happens is it goes dysfunctional long before that happens. But unfortunately, medicine will tell you that it doesn't show up on blood work, so you're fine. How many people listening to this have heard that one? That right. everything shows up normal. There's no reason you should feel sick. Right. Well, right. that's because the blood tests don't show you accurate levels of uh, function, right? Um, they're only going to show you when something falls outside of the parameters, you know? So if, so if a three question? is normal, four is not, you know, as soon as you're a four, we'll talk to you. But, you know. So does this kind of explain why uh, a lot of women are put on um, their choice of horm or thyroid medication and why they say, I'm taking this and I'm just not feeling any better because yeah. potentially it's not looking at their liver. So, and their liver has to repackage and escort out the spent Synthroid or whatever else they're on, right? And so right. it's kind of, it seems like a double liver whammy. It is. I mean, the poor liver is, is overloaded. I mean, it's, it's got an onslaught coming at it like that. And that's just the way medicine works. I mean, if, if you don't have enough of something, they just give you more. I mean, you know, right. if you have too much of something, they try to decrease it. So you just throw stuff at your presenting symptom. But it's not going after why it's an issue. I'm not saying that you can't take medication. I mean, we don't want people to suffer. And if we can take down your symptoms, but I, what I would like for you to do is try to go after the underlying reason in the background at the same time. I would like for people to do both because that's where you need to mix the, the, the approaches together so that the person can heal. But so I don't know if you've looked around or not, but there's a lot of people who've got thyroid issues. <laughs> and so, yeah. but nobody's looking at the liver because medicine will say, well, the liver doesn't have anything to do with your thyroid. And I'm like, are you reading the same books I'm reading? Because it's, <laughs> not, it's not true. And then, then you also have your gut. So particularly your small intestines and 80% of your immune system resides in your gut. So that tells you something already. If you have an autoimmune disease problem, you got a gut problem straight out of the gate. Right, right. But because you had what they're trying to give you for your RA is what? Immune suppressed. They're trying to suppress your immune system. Well, how about you suppress it to figure out why it's going crazy at the same time? <laughs> and then, but here's the thing. When the gut gets inflammation in there, like that, but you have a significant portion of your lymphatic system is in your gut. It's the first system that comes to your rescue when things break through the gut that are not supposed to be there with what that. they call yeah what they call uh, leaky gut syndrome right or, or where you have the inability to um, uh, digest food well and stuff leaks through the, the gut right. um, and the lymph is the first to attack it but in huh. your gut in your gut is where you have the majority of neurotransmitters that uh, go to your brain to control how your brain fires and wires and your mood. So you have, some people may have heard of serotonin uh, because mm -hmm. serotonin is what everybody takes when they have these serotonin drugs for depression or anxiety. So they're trying to change the serotonin levels. And if you got serotonin in your gut, you've got dopamine in your gut that's related to Parkinson's, and you have GABA, all these sorts of different things. So you're, you're only going to have as well-functioning hormones in your brain, the neurotransmitters, and in your brain as you are with your gut. So if you have a dysfunctional gut, and right. people usually ask me, how do you know you have a gut problem? I'm like, because you're breathing. That's how I know you got a gut problem. And <laughs> I just happen to know how bad it is right? And then that's going to uh, have a lot to do with your uh, hormones as well. And then when you get this oxygenated environment that doesn't allow the cells to thrive, then you get bacteria and fungus and usually yeast like candida. Right. Those things in and of itself begin to mess with the hormone balance of your body as well. So it, it, you can't just, if you have hormone issues, you can't just take hormones. 
right it's it's way more uh, involved in that and that's why I think that we're getting more lost in our approaches to trying to help people with what they call lifestyle diseases, which are chronic diseases, mm -hmm. because there's not one thing you can blame. You know, in trauma medicine, it's it's very simple. Like, okay, uh, if somebody stabs me with a knife in my shoulder, A equals B. Like, take the knife out, fix my shoulder, I'm good. Um, you know, if I have some, um, infection like Ebola, okay, well, let me just try to kill that thing and no more Ebola. But with autoimmune disease, it's not one thing. It's a mixture of things. So I can't say, okay, well, there's one reason that my shoulder doesn't get better over the last five years and nobody can figure out why. And that's okay. See, they agree. Um, they agree. They agree. Well, that's but, one of the reasons why yeah. I came up with my restore program was because I was handling my health like a personal trainer, understanding that I had something that was really pissed off. But what what is it connected to? You know, yeah. what is it connected to? Like you said, my back hurts. Let's let's look at the hip. Let's look at the ankle. So I I kind of knew that. But um, I really just was hammering like nutrition really hard. Nutrition and movement. Those were the th two things that I really yeah. knew. And where I really started to get some traction. And I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely not 100%. I don't think anybody's ever 100%. But I'm 100% better than I was, you know, crawling mm -hmm. in the afternoon because I was so tired, you know, or, or whatever. And, yeah. But um, is my restore program, um, R-E-S-T-O-R-E, -E, is rest. That's about stress management. And then eating matters, your sleep, your tribe, so the people that you hang out with. And then opening up your ability to deal with your feelings, know what they are, deal with your feelings, what's really true. And then comes repair after those things, then comes repair. And then finally, we're going to know more about movement and what movement is appropriate. I have all my clients move throughout all of their you know, uh, work with me, but really tackling that stress and, and, and getting to the underlying issue was was what made the biggest difference for me. What is stressing my body out? And, and it was the, the gut stuff that you're talking about, you know, and the lymph work and, and my food just wasn't doing it. And, and I was trying, I mean, I remember sending you messages, you know, and whatever. And you're like, you know, go, you know, get some ferments you got, you know, or, or whatever. And, and I just needed to kind of put it all together. And so what, like with, with, your, with your lymph program and your uh, body um, um, aquarium program and everything, how is it for the people that are watching this? And I know that their minds are blown with thinking like, why haven't I heard this kind of stuff? And how come somebody has yeah. told me about my, my thyroid and my liver? And, and I call the lymph system here in, in, my, in my practice, you know, your um, waste management system, you know? Yeah. And um, how do they how do they learn like either how to work with you or things to do at home? Or, um, I know I watch your videos and your, your Instagram, you're like the king of social media with giving out usable information and stuff you can do right now, no matter who you are and where you are. But what, can you share a little bit about that? What people can yeah. do? Sure. Cool. I try to give them a couple of things they can do, uh, after listening to this one that, that can help them. Because I talk about what, what I reference called LTAs, L-T-A-S, which stands for Little Tiny Action Steps. It doesn't take a lot to make a huge change in, in the body, especially when you work with the lymphatic system. Because, I mean, the system's been waiting for you to figure this out, trust me. Um, <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, with the system, I, I wanted to make it simple. I wanted to make it easy, and I wanted to make it so anybody can do it to themselves. So it's, it's a self-assessment and it's a self-treatment program, but you could also do it to other people from if you're just a regular person, because uh, people message me all the time and say, I'm not a healthcare professional, I'm just a regular person. Can I do your program? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yes, my program is for humans of all different types, mm -hmm. but you can take it to the next level if you want to treat a, another person, right? And as long as you stay kind of true to the, the easy fundamental concepts that you have. So I, I I put the system together so um, you could watch a video in the comfort of your own home. So it's a streaming 
video that once you purchase it, you own it for life and you can watch it forever. And you, you go through the first part of the video, which is about 45 minutes and explains to you in detail what I just explained to you, what the system is. And then it shows you how to, how to assess it. So you know where to press and see if it hurts. And then you also know where to treat. You can do it by hand or you can do it with what we call dry brushing, where you take a brush and you go over it. But I made it unique. I show you how to do it with a toothbrush. Um, <laughs> and the reason I chose a toothbrush is because, you know, uh, yeah, everybody has one or you can get one so you can start right away because people would say to me uh, I don't know what kind of brush. I don't know how hard a brush you get. I don't know how big a brush to get and I'm like, well, let's just start with a toothbrush because you know, sure. you, know you want to remove as much friction from anybody from starting a new habit and then they would begin to do that um, So basically I give them a real real simple one. I'll tell you um, that, that they can try and this can make a, a big difference. I'm just gonna give you like three places that you can take with your hand and you can just slap, you know, five to 10 times on an area uh, of your body. And you're gonna do both sides and you're gonna do it in the order I'm gonna show you because the order is very important because when the lymphatic system drains a certain way uh, in your body towards your neck, and you have to do it in a certain sequence so the fluid flows more easily. It, it, you get better results that way than just kind of slapping anywhere you want to on your body when you do it. Um, so uh, I'm gonna show you or tell you, are people gonna be seeing this show like video or is it just gonna be audio? I'm gonna do both. Okay, so I'll, 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 I'll show it and I'll explain it at the same time. And I'll give you the, something that you can uh, take every day to help flush things out a little bit. So okay. you just take like, you know, like you're gonna slap something, right? Like you're clapping your hands together, that kind of thing with your fingers. And what you're gonna do is you, you take your right hand and you're gonna put it above your collarbone on the left hand side, you know, not straight on your neck, but right above the collarbone. And you're gonna slap there five to 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So, you know, kind of hard, but no pain. And then you do the same thing now on the right side. So you go above the right side five to 10 times. And we slap there because that's where all the lymph wants to travel to before it goes back to the heart, right? And then what you're gonna do is you could probably stand up or you can do it seated. You're gonna go across the crease of your groin on both sides where when you sit down, you've got, yeah, you got, yeah, you got the crease. And yeah. you can do both sides at the same time. I usually have people slap that region five to 10 times, yeah. So then now that'll move the lymph in the groin and that'll start traveling up towards the neck. And then the last one you do is gonna be right behind both knees. So you can bend over a little bit or sit in a chair and then you slap the back of both knees five to 10 times. And then now all you're gonna do is while you're standing up or if you're seated, you wanna stand up you're just gonna jump up and down like you're kind of going up on your toes, like you're jump roping. And, and you do that for about 10 seconds and put your hands up over your head so your arms can drain down. And what this does is that that moves the fluid up and down like this way and helps it begin to drain out of your body. And most people will tell me that I can't believe something that simple can make such a big difference, but right. you wait and see. Like. <laughs> It, you'll yeah. usually feel something right away, you know, one, that you just slapped yourself, but two, yeah. you'll, you'll feel a little bit more energy. You'll feel almost tingly in a way because you changed how fluid moves and all those areas that you just slapped are major areas where blood has to flow. But the next day you wake up, you'll usually feel more energy. But even just from that, some people feel like they might get a little bit of a headache from that. Mm because you actually are starting to detoxify already because all those areas are, are places where you have lymph nodes and lymph nodes are the places that kill all those toxins. And when they get backed up, you, when you slap them, you release all that waste into your system in one shot. So you might right. get a little bit of a detoxification reaction where you get a little tired, fatigue, you get a headache mm -hmm. like that. And that's normal, that's normal. Okay. 
But what you can do to help offset that is you want to hydrate your body. So you drink water, but you don't drink plain water. Because plain water doesn't go into cells very well. You want to try to put something in the water, what we call structured water. When you put something in the water, you actually change the physical bonding properties of the water. So it can actually cross the membranes of your cells much easier. Most people, I'll tell them, especially if you have a sluggish liver, is to throw a little bit of fresh lemon in the water, lemon water. Lemon will actually help you acid, uh, to um, uh, alkalize your body, not make it acidic. And it's a great okay. liver flush. You could, put a, you could do that or you could put a little tincture uh, in there of sea salt or what they call pink salt, not table salt, one of the two. And then that will also help absorption because the water inside your body is more like sea salt than seawater than regular water. Uh, or you can put electrolytes. You can buy electrolytes and put them in the water and drink it. And then that'll really help you uh, rehydrate because most people, if you have an autoimmune disease or chronic pain, you're dehydrated. I don't care if you drink a lot of water or not, you're dehydrated. Because yeah. just because you drink water doesn't mean it's going into the cells when you drink it. Absolutely. Um, if you have a lymphatic system that's overloaded, trust me, it's not going into the cells as well as it could. Right. Um, and if you do those like simple things, like every day, like my system shows you way more than that. I show you all the different nodes, but those are three big ones that we call node roads, areas right. where a lot of these important things come together. If you just do that, it can make a huge difference. So most people, when they come to my course or they do the video or they send me messages, we've already kind of set them already through our conversation, but they t always tell me two things. One, why the hell didn't somebody tell me this stuff before? Right, right. Uh, big, and then they get actually, they get physically upset because they're like, somebody should have told me this stuff before. Right. And then the other one is, the, the other one is like, I can't believe it's that simple to take care of. I agree. I know my, the ones I've done after I, after I took your course is um, I combine it with some of the other neural lymphatic points, you know, where you covered like, you know, the head and, you know, the armpits and, you know, the belly. And, and yeah. I have my, I have all my clients. That's part of how they start and the bouncing. That is, that's how they start their training. You know, mm -hmm. if it's somebody I'm doing strength training with, um, that is part of their warm up. Is I see them. You know what I mean? We're visiting and they're talking and they're doing. <laughs> you know, and 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 they don't. I know at first I guide them through it. And if I have a slew of newer clients, it means that I might be guiding somebody and I just say, just do what I do. Literally like four or five people in a row, maybe, or, mm -hmm. or whatever. And I tell you what, I feel fantastic, you know, yeah. after doing all of that lymph work all day. There isn't a day that I don't do the dry brushing. Um, and then throughout the day, I notice uh, it is even helpful. Um, if I hit some of my points, just even when I'm feeling kind of tired, you know, mm. especially around here, this is where all, and what's really funny is when I'm having like a flare, which isn't as often anymore, but um, when I'm having a flare, my husband will see me rubbing here and he'll mm. know, he'll ask me, are you feeling okay? And I'm always like, oh yeah, I'm fine. You know, yeah. and I don't realize how my body kind of naturally wants to wants to help itself. I have yet to download. I need to get uh, the aquarium. I know I've, I've, I did your course and absolutely love it and refer back to the notes frequently that I took down in San Diego. That was totally awesome. Um, yeah. Are you doing any um, uh, the body aquarium stuff? Um, I've got people watch this or at least the podcasting is all over the world. And I know you travel all over the world. And so um, where, where are you going to be in 2020, do you know your calendar? You're gonna be all over again? Yeah, pretty much all over, honestly. Like, uh, my, I have a wonderful assistant who, and she's my director of operations. Her name is Louisa. Yeah, and yeah. yeah and she, she pretty much sets things up and tells me, okay, you go stand here. And then I just show up, but I tell her kind of where I wanna go. Like, people reach out cool. to me and say, can you go here? Can you go here? Like that. And 
Um, I did a lot more courses outside of the U.S. last year. I'll try to do more uh, inside the U.S. this year That's because great. the program the program is always evolving. Like I'm always learning based on when I teach. I learn things better by here's the thing when you teach you can have a concept of how something is going to work or go but it doesn't always work out like that and, right. and, and that's why i do all this stuff before i began to teach this program i worked on myself first and then clients for a long time to yeah. to get it is is i don't like to say perfect because it's not because it's always evolving but and then when when research changes or i find something that i think can work a little bit better then I'll change it up. So it's a little bit different than it originally was, but the fundamental concepts are the same that you go through there. And so uh, I will definitely have some coming to all the different coasts, East Coast, West Coast, and then I'll go down to Texas and I'll go usually up towards uh, Canada. So I'll be doing uh, that for sure. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I When I first put this, uh, when I first started to look out there for stuff about the lymphatic system, and this was when I began to do it about three years ago. There really wasn't a lot, but what you did see um, seemed so complicated or overwhelming that you didn't even know right. where to start. But there was nothing out there for like your everyday person that could could try it. And I'm like, you know what? You ever heard of this Gandhi guy? Yeah, <laughs> you know, he 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 said a quote that's always stuck with me: "Be the change that you wish to see in the world." So I figured, yeah. you know what, if there's nothing out there really about the lymphatic system, well, then I'm going to do it, right? And so I decided yeah. to, I, I, I really, what I did was I just called my film guy up and I'm like, okay, I want you here next week. We're going to film a video. And it started like that. And I put the video <laughs> together and I recorded it and put it up. And I didn't know what to expect because it's something that's a topic that not many people are familiar with. And if they did see it, they're like, that's weird. I don't really need to do that because I don't have a lymphatic system problem. So I didn't know how it would be received. And I was not even thinking of teaching courses at that time either. Sure. But uh, a crazy thing happened. One, I've, had, I've been very blessed over the years to do a lot on social media. And I have people that follow my work that they really – gravitated towards it like it must have struck something in several different ways but I, I think the biggest reason it took off is because when people do the work they notice quick improvements yes. like really fast and they're like they're actually astonished quite quite honestly okay. that that they feel that difference and then they just want to tell everybody else and it just literally exploded from there and then I started to get messages every day I still get them every day from people from all corners of the world, from all different ages and all different problems. And I save all of them because I, they're, they're really touching for me of how much this thing helped them. And they tried everything else or nothing had helped. And they just did this. And you, you name the condition. It doesn't really right, matter. Right. And then somebody said to me, do you have like a course on it? And I'm like, well, not yet, <laughs> but yeah, I might as well. And so how I am is this, I'm like, okay, well, I'll put a course together. Let me just put a one day course together because I don't know if people would show up for a course and I'll just do one day and I'll test the waters. And I did the one day course and people just were like loving it. Like, especially when it's so hands on and I'm like, okay, well I could go way more in depth. And then I decided to make it a two day course at that standpoint. And then, I introduced work in my course that makes it um, very unique where when people get lymphatic work, they usually don't get work on the abdominal organs at the same time. Right. So I show people how to, to take care of their own organs <laughs> as well. Yeah. And then they get even better results, not only from the lymph, but from the autoimmune disease because they have such inflammation around uh, all of their organs and their abdomen. And that's, that's like a huge, that's been a huge um, bonus to this as well. So I added that on. And I, what I'm thinking of doing for 2020, honestly, the first one to hear it actually, is I, somebody, I, th I think I might put, I put out a video, I put out a workshop. I might actually put out a 
book on it at the same time. Wow, but good for you. Make it a different book than what most people are used to seeing when they look at something based on um, health, right? Like like a health book. Most of them are bore the living hell out of me. Uh, right. And, you know, or, or I'm reading it and you've lost me in the Same first five story. pages. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to make it like a Dr. Seuss pop-up book kind of thing, you know? Uh, <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Like can pop up and rub here or something like that. But yeah, so there, I think that's so what many, I might do. Yeah. There's so many things I was just listening to. Uh, I think it was Dr. Ruscio on one of his podcasts and he has somebody on there you know, talking about uh, the visceral abdominal scarring, you know, yeah. scar tissue and, and stuff like that. And, and I know that you were the one that got me with my three C-sections doing the dry brushing on my C-section scar, you yeah. know, and they're kind of, they're looking at, you know, some of the, and I know after my first C-section, when I was having my second one, because my children were massive, um, that huh. um, I had, a, <laughs> I had a, bunch of uh, adhesions that they had to cut them away from my bladder and all of this, you know, stuff going on. And so um, there's so many ways to take the abdominal work. Um, I know that my clients um, from some of the, the neurolymphatic points that, they, that you've covered in past courses and stuff that as they're doing that and they're doing like the diaphragm release and, and, and different things that it all plays together, yep. you know. And, and, and it does, my clients that are faithful with, I know that they're faithful doing the work when they walk in and they're just visiting with me for the first five or 10 minutes and I watch them do it and they're doing it while they're talking. It's just second nature, you know, yeah. and, and, and the big results are there, you know, for them, for um, the pain or fatigue or even lower back issues. I always think about like that connective tissue or even possibilities of adhesions with with just something simple simple like stuck joints you know what i mean that they're kind of you know we're working through so it's cool to it's cool to be a part of and i'm, I'm glad you're out there doing it i just interviewed katherine arnston from um energy bits and she's all into algae and i recommend them they're so awesome and um and when I heard her and sharing her passion about it, she basically said the same thing you did, is that nobody is talking about algae. She had a sister with breast cancer who called her and, you know, Catherine has like an MBA and she was in the business world in Boston. And then now she's like all doing algae and something totally different and speaking, you know, like you do and educating. And I think it's a big deal. I, I'm so grateful for our media like this and, and for us normal people to have access, you know, to you know, um, influencers and, and people that are educated and passionate um, at the real life, real deal. Like you said, it doesn't take very long. I know I do mine every morning, you know, and every single morning I do it without fail. And when I don't do it, I notice how I feel. Uh, yeah. I mean, it can just be like a small little habit. So I, I wanted to try to make it where people can fit it into their life. Right. Because sometimes this is there. If you made it too involved, they're like, you know, that's yeah. great doc, but like, who I ain't got time for that. Yeah. I just uh, do it when I get ready in the morning. I mean, you gotta right. get your, stand in there, get your makeup on your hair. And I put a, usually a podcast on in the morning and I'm, you know, I, I've made the morning drinks and everything. So I'm just getting dressed, you know? And so as I'm putting on my, I use olive oil, you know, or coconut oils, I'm doing all of that. I just do it. And um, I don't know what it's like to not do it, you know, anymore. You know, maybe I get distracted when we're out of town or in a hotel room or something like that. But, and that's when I notice, you know, like, wow, or if we sleep in, wow, I didn't do it. It's just different. I can't thank you enough for coming on my, on my podcast. You were literally the first person. Uh, I think I asked you earlier in the year. It took me a while to get my brain together on how I was going to be able to do this and my courage, <laughs> my courage up to do it because it's a whole new platform for me and mm -hmm. and so I figured I just want everything wellness then real stuff real stuff for people and that's what I really think that you deliver is real real stuff and I thank you so much
And I hope people well, like follow you. you. Yeah, follow you on Facebook and Instagram. He's got great stuff, um, and great, great stuff, real user friendly stuff. And um, and I love all the little short, you know, videos that you do, and and seeing the classes that you're holding all over the world. And one of these days, I'm gonna go to one of those uh, in Europe just to make a nice business trip. <laughs> there you go. Exactly. Right <laughs> off time. Bit. I totally do some fun stuff and see some fun stuff. Well, I thank you so much. We'll wrap this up. I know you're over on the East Coast and it's probably getting late. You got dinner and family and stuff. But Dr. Perry, it was an absolute pleasure. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank you very much. And thank you, everyone, for, for listening. It uh, was really enjoyable. I could have kept going. So <laughs> I know. I can, too. I can, too. I just eat this stuff up. I, too, am like a dog with a bone when it comes to stuff that yeah. works. So. Well, you have some thank great energy. I can definitely tell. Cool, cool. Okay, thank you. And um, I'll be talking to you real soon. Okay, bye. Bye.